Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video I'm going to teach you a little bit more about the structure or the anatomy of a black hole using video games. Today you're going to learn a little bit more about uh, black holes and we're going to use both Space Engine and Universe Sandbox Square to learn about these awesome unusual objects. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> Now, we're going to be actually talking about uh, the structure of black holes, but before we do this, let's actually take a look at the simulation that's called Black Hole and the Sun that will kind of actually show us how the accretion disk is made around this beautiful tiny black hole right here. So there's our sun basically being shredded by the black hole, and there it is creating the beautiful accretion disk. So... First of all, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about what we see here. This black hole looks uh, like a typical black hole in Universe Sandbox Square. It is not a very realistic representation of a black hole, though. All of the black holes here are basically just this. They're literally black holes with a bit of a lens effect around them. That's not exactly what we're going to be creating here. We're going to be trying to create a very realistic representation of this unusual space phenomenon that Einstein didn't really think existed. But let's just start by creating a relatively realistic black hole using Universe Sandbox and some of the bugs in the game. So we're going to go under planets here and let's just choose any gas giant. I usually just pick Jup Jupiter and go under the settings here and change the actual uh, mass of Jupiter to about 120 or maybe 200 Jupiters. This will create a red dwarf, but it's going to look kind of unusual. It actually almost looks like a black dwarf, uh, but it's still it's basically a very small star. We're going to do this again, but this time we're going to click on the sun value here. And I'll just change this to about 1.5. 1.5 suns. And then reset this, and it will create these beautiful uh, jets uh, around it. So this is kind of a bug in the game that is necessary to create a realistic uh, looking black hole here. The last step here is to decrease the size of um, this object to, let's just say, about 2 kilometers. And boom. And there is our beautiful... Uh, black hole that now has these relativistic jets um, that are projected from both directions. This is absolutely necessary for us to essentially create um, a, a realistic looking black hole. So now I'm also going to give this black hole a little bit more mass just so I can actually place objects around it and let's uh, maybe stop its velocity because it's, it's moving around a little bit too much. And so now we're going to try to create the second part of uh, this black hole. We're going to create the accretion disk. Let's maybe place um, a star or two around it and see what happens here. All right, so there's the beginning of our accretion disk. I should have done this a little bit slower, actually. This was a little bit too fast. Let's place another sun right here. And this will start creating the accretion disk around uh, the black hole. And to create a relatively realistic looking uh, accretion disk, we actually have to shred quite a lot of stars. We actually have to basically do this for a few minutes. Um, but as you keep doing this, you'll notice that uh, many of these stars will start acquiring mass. So you have, to, you have to kind of erase them just so that they don't go supernova. I'm going to place a few more here just so we can create an accretion disk closer to the black hole as well. And I think this is actually kind of enough for now. So there is our accretion disk orbiting around the black hole, and there is our uh, particle jets uh, protruding from both sides of this black hole. Now, this right here is a lot more realistic already. So every black hole has the accretion disk formed by all of the matter that essentially falls into it and starts kind of orbiting around it. All of the black holes, or most of the black holes, especially the ones that actually have uh, stuff falling into them, will have these two relativistic jets coming out uh, from basically top and bottom. And we still don't really know why exactly this is happening and how exactly they're formed. But we know that basically all black holes have them. And when a black hole is very, very powerful, meaning that it shreds a lot of matter and it just so happens to um, project its jet directly into us, this is what we would call a quasar or in this case, a blazer if it's a little bit off. Uh, these are some of the brightest objects in our universe and we actually see them from as far away as the, the basically the limit of or the border of the universe. So that's the first two parts that I wanted to cover, the uh, relativistic jets and the accretion disk. 
Now let's uh, zoom in here a little bit and talk about the other two parts. Uh, the Essentially the two parts that all black holes possess as well. One of them is the singularity and it's right in the middle of this black hole. This is essentially a point um, where all of the mass has actually been condensed into a tiny, tiny, tiny point, infinitely small point that essentially curved and warped the space around it so much that uh, it created a black hole. Now. It has close to infinite density and it's essentially almost zero volume, but not quite. And this uh, particular point is something that we can't really explain using modern physics. As a matter of fact, everything inside of the black hole uh, doesn't obey modern physics anymore. It's um, the only physics we know that kind of covers a little bit of what's going on inside the black hole is the quantum physics. And even that is not really good at explaining what exactly is going on on the inside. Now, right around the, the uh, singularity, right here, this is what we call the event horizon. This is basically the area around the black hole where no light uh, can escape. Essentially, at this point right here, you, uh, the escape velocity you, ne you need to have is speed of light. And since nothing can move faster than the speed of light, this essentially becomes black. And this is why we call it a black hole. So technically, it's not really, really black because it does have a bit of uh, radiation coming off it known as Hawking radiation uh, that is formed through another quantum mechanic concept known as uh, quantum tunneling. But uh, we're not going to cover this just yet. This will be a special video sometime in the future. But this particular area is also known as the Schwarzschild radius, and it actually can be measured using a very simple formula that you see on the screen right now. And this radius is basically calculated using this formula, and this is where the event horizon starts. Now, a smaller black hole, like the one you see here, or even a much smaller one of just uh, one mass of the sun that I'm going to place right here, will have its uh, Schwarzschild radius or its event horizon at a very, very, very small, uh, short location here. And as a matter of fact, the radius here is just three kilometers. This larger black hole that's uh, approximately 10,000 masses of sun uh, is uh, just a little bit larger than our planet Earth. So it's just a little bit larger in terms of its event horizon. So basically, these are not very, very large. But the larger the black hole, the larger its Schwarzschild radius, and so the black hole in the center of our own galaxy, Sagittarius A star, has a very, 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 very large uh, Schwarzschild radius of close to about one astronomical unit, which is basically the distance of Earth uh, to the Sun. So it, essentially, if we were to place this black hole in the middle of our solar system, it would swallow everything up to the um, Earth. And we're going to do this at the end of the video. But let's actually just keep talking about different structures. So this is the event horizon, the accretion disk, you have the... Um, large jets of gas, uh, very, very highly energetic particles coming out from the top and the bottom. We have the singularity in the center. And of course, the event horizon is explained using the Schwarzschild radius. And there's actually um, one more area around the black hole that most people don't realize exists. Now to show you the next concept, I'm actually going to create a new black hole and we're going to use our own Sagittarius A star here. Um, and I'm going to explain to you something known as the photon sphere. Now this actually does have a photon sphere and it's inside here, but I can't really place an object there. So it would be impossible for us to see. If I were to place another smaller black hole in orbit around this black hole, uh, it would orbit at a speed of about 180 to 200,000 kilometers per second. Not exactly the speed of light, but very close to it. So I'm going to make uh, Sagittarius A star about 10 times bigger. So now let's try this again. We're going to place a black hole right here and maybe right here and maybe right here and maybe a few more on the outskirts here. And notice how this one here has the velocity of 1.5 speed of light. Now that's impossible. It's actually going to fall into the black hole. So we need to change this to one speed of light. We're going to go and do this for all of them because nothing can move faster than speed of light. So all of these other black holes will be actually orbiting at the maximum speed, which is going to be just under the speed of light, except of course for one right around here that we're going to name the photon sphere. This particular black hole is orbiting at the uh, velocity of light or the speed of light, one speed of light. 
And this is essentially where we have this uh, theoretical concept of photon sphere that we're hoping one day we'll be able to see using more powerful telescopes. But essentially what this uh, area represents is the area where all of the light that ever came into this black hole and all of the photons that came here that basically got stuck and now orbits around this black hole. Now this is actually represented really, really beautifully in Space Engine that you can kind of see on the screen right now. Um, but uh, here it's going to be very difficult to represent because we're not going to be able to create this type of environment. Other black holes that are orbiting within this region are in the area known as the um, unstable orbit region. Now, everything here, doesn't matter what it is, will never be able to maintain a stable orbit. So all of these black holes will actually fall into the supermassive black hole right there and they'll basically disappear forever because their speed will never be able to cross the speed of light. They'll, all of them will actually get absorbed by the black hole. So nothing can survive this area. Everything outside of it is known as the innermost circular stable orbit region and here you can actually still have uh, masses and objects like for example we're just going to place a bunch of stars or specifically our own sun um, in orbit around this black hole just to give an idea that you can still have a bunch of mass orbiting right there and this is essentially what uh, the accretion disk is it's formed by all of this mass orbiting around the uh, supermassive black hole and it creates th this unusual beautiful effect and of course the accretion disk itself that then is um responsible for creating the relativistic jets as well. So whatever mass falls into this region and gets absorbed by the uh, supermassive black hole disappears forever and basically creates the uh, relativistic jets. Now there's one more thing I haven't covered in this video and I think I'm not going to cover it just yet because it's a very complex concept and it's something I wanted to talk about separately and this is a concept of the ergosphere. Now, ergosphere refers to the idea of a, a spinning black hole, a black hole that spins really fast and creates a very unusual effect around it that sort of looks like this. It's basically an egg-shaped um, effect of warped space-time. Now, this is a cool concept that we think maybe one day when we're super, super advanced, we'll be able to use to harness energy, but I don't want to talk about this just yet because I've already covered all of the necessary um, areas and parts of a typical black hole. So, we, we, you know a little bit about singular you know a little bit about the event horizon, the Schwarzschild radius, the relativistic jets that are unfortunately not here anymore because I had to create a new black hole. You also know about the accretion disk, the um, innermost uh, circular stable orbit, and the photon sphere that's somewhere right around here. And anyway, so that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video, and hopefully you learned something from it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe. Now I'm going to do as promised and go into the main simulation here and place Sagittarius A star right in the middle of our solar system just to see what happens. Now, uh, in this game, it's actually a little bit smaller than it should be, but that's okay. We're going to forgive it. We're going to place it right in place of our sun and look at that. Everything basically gets almost instantly absorbed by the Sagittarius A star. That was really, really fast. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate all of your support. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this video and consider supporting this channel on Patreon as well. I'll see you in the next video. Game you later. And as always, bye-bye.